Hi, my name is Abigail from Yayu Paper Objects, and today we're going to talk about maps. We'll go through the Make Your Own Map Shadow Box Kit, and we'll also provide instructions if you'd like to customize a map you've purchased from, from me or from Garrett Wade. Um, if you've purchased the Make Your Own Map Shadow Box Kit, you'll find inside your package one eight inch square shadow box frame, instruction booklet, as well as six square pieces of paper. You have three white so that you have some extras to cut your map out of, and then three background options just to get you started. Um, I'll show you later in the video some more options for your backgrounds if you don't like these colors. Now, as you'll see on the instruction booklet and on the outside of your package, one of the most important things you're going to need to complete this project is a tool for cutting paper. Now, if you've purchased your kit from GarrettWade.com, you may have purchased it alongside this Japanese wood carving knife, which is a fun tool um, and works well for all sorts of different projects, including cutting paper. Um, I also have an Ergo Kiwi knife that I use for a lot of my work. Um, but there's a lot of different tools that you can use to cut paper. Um, anything sharp that you have around the house. Um, scissors will work, but because we're cutting a shape out of the middle of paper, they'll be a little trickier. So I'm going to show you how to use um, a knife to cut your paper. So let's start by making a map. So following the instructions from your booklet, um, I've taken a screenshot of this lake in Cambridge, Massachusetts called Fresh Pond. Kind of ironic, I know. Um, and I took a screenshot, I printed it out full size on this eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And what this does is gives me the, the lake about the right size for my eight inch square um, paper to cut the, the shape out of. And so now what I need to do is get this outline onto this piece of paper. And you'll see this paper is very thick. I can't see through it to trace it. And I also want to be mindful of not having pencil lines on the outside of my finished piece. So I'm gonna do this fun uh, pencil transfer trick that I'm not even sure where I learned, but um, you start by tracing the outline of the shape you want in pencil. It's very important for it to be pencil. And you want to make sure that you're pressing really hard and that the pencil line is very thick and shiny. This pencil that I'm using has a wider lead. It's a little softer, so it's pretty easy for me to get a nice thick line. If you're using a thin mechanical pencil or um, your pencil is really has a really fine point to it, you may want to go over it a few times to make sure that your line is nice and thick. And this is the part that's more important to be more accurate. This is the line that will be transferred to the piece of paper that you're cutting, so the line that you'll eventually cut along. So this, this here is okay because I'll know when I'm cutting it that I want to smooth that out. Um, once you have your line traced, we want to make sure that this side of the paper faces your square that you're going to cut. And I don't know if you can see on the video, but I can just barely see the outline of my square through my paper. And because of how hard I've traced my line, I can see a little bit of an outline where my shape is. Um, and, and also because the printout has the lake darker than the background, I can kind of see. So what I'm trying to do is center my shape on the square of paper. Um, if you need to hold this up to a window or if you have a light box or something, um, you might be able to get a little bit more visibility but you just wanna get it centered on the square because this is what, where you'll cut your shape and you don't want it to be uneven um, or sort of um, 
asymmetrical, I guess. You want it to probably be centered unless you're leaving space for text above or below. Um, and the way we get our, our traced shape, which again, this is the pencil side. The way we're gonna get this onto the paper behind it is by taking our pencil again, or if you have, um, you can use a bone folder, something to really burnish over that pencil line without allowing your paper to shift very much. The pencil, I find, is easier to, to get the transfer without shifting the, the papers around too much. You just wanna make sure you're going over your original line that's on the back of the paper. And you can check your work by making sure you hold papers in place so they don't slip, peel it back. And now you can see that part of my line has been transferred onto the square piece of um, paper that I'm gonna cut. Now, I've already done this so that you don't have to wait for me to do the whole step. Um, and I also traced these smaller ponds around the main lake. And you can see my, my tracing isn't super, super perfect or super exact, um, but it's close enough that I can cut these lines. Um, I kind of know where the arc is. And I'm gonna use this wood carving knife to get started. Um, for actually cutting, it's important that you keep your lines smooth. Um, you won't see this side of the paper at the end, right? This is the part, this is the side that you'll face against the glass in your frame for the finished piece. Um, so we don't have to worry about getting exactly on the pencil line, but we do want to make sure that we're cutting a line that is um, smooth. So I'm making sure that if I need to stop and pick up my knife, which I encourage you to do frequently, that I get the tip back into that same half so that the line will appear to be unbroken. And here's where you want to make sure that you're moving your paper frequently so that you're always pulling the knife toward you. And I'm using um, a self-healing cutting mat underneath here to make sure that my surface is protected, staying in control of the blade, trying to keep my other extremities from being in front of where it's going, just in case I slip. And again, I'm not worrying too, too much about staying exactly on the line. Focused more on making sure that my curves stay nice and smooth. And depending on the sort of place you've chosen for your map, um, your shape may look very, very different. And your strategies might be a little different if you're choosing to make a map of an urban area that's been sort of subdivided by blocks a lot. You might have a lot of stair step sort of shapes on your edges. Um, and my tip to you is that, or for you, is that um, I can cut into this shape that I'm cutting out without worrying about the finished piece, right? So I can just come in here if I need to, to get, say I needed to get um, a sharp angle. I don't know if you can see. Um, this piece doesn't matter. This piece is trash in the end, recycling really. Um, so if you need to cut into this shape to get your outside shape to be as pristine as possible, go for it. Um, that, that might make it easier if you have a less organic shape. So I have finished cutting a different one. And 
you can see here on the edge, I've got some pencil line, but it doesn't matter because my map is backwards, except my map is correct. So because we've traced onto the back of the finished piece, in the end, what we've mirrored is um, reflected back to the, the proper orientation. So if you want to cut your cut words, cut a label out of your map, like the, the maps that you might purchase from my shop, um, you'll want to write the words on your printout and do the same transfer process onto the back of the piece that you're cutting out and cut out the words backwards so that in the final piece, you can view them properly. And in the instruction booklet, I give you a little diagram so you can check um, to make sure that you've got everything lined up properly. So that's it. I've cut the shape. Um, and next we'll do some decorating the background and get it all framed up. So now that I've cut my map of Fresh Pond, I've cut it from the white, one of the white squares of paper included in the kit, um, I'm gonna play around with some background options. So I chose not to cut the name of the lake out of my paper because I, I have this old dictionary um, and it's in really bad shape. It's, there's no, it has no like financial value, um, even though it's from the early 1900s. And um, I've been keeping it because I thought it'd be fun for a collage project. Because my lake is named Fresh Pond, I thought it would be really fun to cut out fresh and pond from the, <laughs> from the dictionary and use that as my label for my map. So that, that's one of my ideas for decorating it. So I've already cut out fresh and fresh water since it was on the same page. Um, and now I'm going to cut out pond. And I have this, these, um, I have this tool called Rolling Sharp, which is hilarious, um, from Garrett Wade that I'm going to use this, and these pages are falling out of the dictionary already anyway, but they're so thin and delicate. Um, and this tool comes with the, the cutting mat. So I thought it would be an easy way to cut out pond, which is here on the page, um, without having to actually rip the page out or if you're cutting from magazines. This is really lightweight and easy to move around um, for doing collage work. So I'm going to cut out pond here. And this tool works really well for lightweight paper. Um, it, it can't cut something as thick as the, the white paper that I've used for the map itself, but it works really well for this really thin, fragile um, vintage paper. So now I have pond. Get this out of the way. Fresh, and I have pond. I have my map. And I'm going with the light blue background, I think. I also found this scrapbook paper that has a fun paint texture. Um, you could also paint on the paper to get a fun texture like this if you don't have scrapbooking paper laying around like I do. Um, you could use a page from a magazine. You could, or the cover of a magazine is, so, is often made of a, a nice thick paper. Um, so I'm just gonna play around with some, some different options here. Um, so I could keep it very simple and just collage my two pieces of um, dictionary paper onto the plain background. 
Um, I could come over here, see what they look like on the painted background, maybe space them out a little differently. I don't love this. It feels a little busy and kind of contrasty with the, the vintage paper. Um, I tend to like to do three-dimensional things with paper. <laughs> you may have, may have gotten that if you follow my work. Um, so I have these strips um, of paper that are just scraps um, left from another project. And I thought it would be fun to try making them into sort of an organic wavy shape. Um, to see what that looks like. With the, the frames that we're using for this, there's some space. These are shadow boxes. So the map will be at the front of the frame right behind the glass, and the background will be at the back of the frame against the, the brown backing board. So you have about a half an inch of space to work with between them. So if you have um, three-dimensional things like a wine cork is probably too big, but if you had um, photographs or movie tickets or um, like a wedding invitation or moving announcement or any sort of other um, sort of paper artifacts about or that re related to the space that you're making a map for or that you've purchased a map for, um, those things can all live within the frame if you'd like them to. Um, so let's see, let's see how this looks. So I don't know if you can tell from the video, but I'm just rubbing my thumb and my forefinger along the paper, um, and that, that lets it curl, the curve. So I can do it in one direction and make a spiral, or I can sort of alternate the direction to make this wavy back and forth sort of shape. They're not perfect, I'm not going for perfect, just want to add some motion, some organic movement. Let's see how this looks. And because of the way the frame goes together, um, I have a sense of, you know, we talked about how much space we have to work with, and working with the strips of paper like this actually lets me even see the, the shadow that I'm going to get. Um, but the your background and your map will be aligned perfectly in the frame. so. You can use, you can sort of stack them to check your spacing. Okay, still not so sure about these. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these two pieces down where they are. I'm um, going to use, actually I'm going to use this double-sided tape. Um, if you're using, um, if you're using glue, you want to make sure that it's acid-free. And if you're using really delicate paper like this, you want to test a sample sheet and make sure that it doesn't bleed through the paper and make um, sort of wet spots. This double-sided tape I'm using is acid-free, and I've used it for a lot of other projects, so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with how it works. And I think it's skinny enough to even work on this little piece. Yeah. It's also clear, um, so even if it overlapped a little bit, I wouldn't really be able to see it. Ripped my pond. Okay. 
Okay. So let's get this into the frame, see what it looks like, and then go from there. Oh, I like to open my frames using this plastic tool. I open a lot of frames, so you may not have something like this around. Um, you may be able to use something rigid like a credit card, or if you have a bone folder, you might be able to get the tip underneath. But basically, we're prying up these metal tabs, um, and they're they're pretty easy to bend. So you could do them with your hands if you needed to, um, or a screwdriver, anything that can get under there. Um, I like to also pry up the picture hanger part so that I can get my fingers under there too. And these steps are the same whether you're working with um, an empty frame from the kit or if you're working with a map that's already been made. First, right up against the glass, we want to put our map and it should look backwards so I can see my, my pencil lines from earlier. And then this is a, a little wooden spacer and that's what keeps your background separate from your map. It gives you that space. Then I'm gonna put my background in, put the backing back on. And these metal tabs are great, um, but they have a finite lifespan. So I like to make sure I bend them as little as possible, which means that before I close my frame, I flip it over and make sure that everything is exactly how I expect it to be. And so looking at it like this, um, behind the glass, I do feel like I need a little bit more visual interest. And um, I think I'll go ahead and put some of those strips of paper on the background. So with these, I do want to use glue going to tear the edges um, since we won't see them because they'll be covered by the map. And this is just a, another scrap piece of paper. Make a little puddle of glue on it and then working a little bit at a time making sure that the part that I've glued then stays off the cutting mat and the other things I'm working on. I'm just dabbing the edge of the paper in glue. And to some extent, the wave shape helps this stay in place, but you can see that you can't really see the glue, certainly not from the top, and my wave stayed in place. So for the next one, do the same thing. This technique is technically called quilling. Um, you can buy pre-cut strips of paper to do this with if you'd like. Um, I 
didn't quite cut these short enough. Fold those down. Let's see what we've got now. Get my glue out of the way so I don't accidentally stick anything else in it. So, map first. Make sure I can see the pencil so that I know it's the right way. Then the spacer. Then my background. And I've forgotten, I've forgotten to leave space for the spacer. So the spacer will stick, will overlap the, the background about a quarter of an inch. So anything you're attaching directly to the background, you need to make sure you leave a border of about a quarter of an inch. Um, and depending on the design of your map, you want to check your edges and see what will be visible in the final piece. So if your map comes really close to the edge, of course, you want to be a little bit more careful. So there we go. I have my waves. I have my label from my vintage dictionary pages. And I've cut my shape from the map. Just going to close up my frame. Now I can give it to my friends who love this pond. Or I can hang it on my wall. It's good to go.